yeah. every technique in the book. You know, yeah. we were moving pretty fast, and uh, and some things. You know, for best laid plans, you'd love to storyboard the whole thing and then methodically go in and shoot it. But you know, the way these things get made uh, and the way that uh, you know we work, we're, we're, there's a lot of improvisation and a lot of learning. And you go back into scenes, and by the time the reels are done, no one should watch them. Because <laughs> 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 they really are a blueprint for for us to work off of and and, and make the movie look and, and feel great. Um, you know, the, the nice thing about this picture and the way we made it is that every part of the process contributed a lot. So we would, you know, board it and, and cut it into reels and the minute it went to the camera, we're still rethinking, like, maybe we should shoot this a different way. And sometimes you would say, gosh, this isn't quite exciting enough. Is there, you know, is there maybe, when it, maybe one of the layout artists could take a shot at, you know, embellishing this action sequence and then, like, something would come back and every once in a while in your Christmas stocking you would yeah, get right. an unbelievable yeah. piece of filmmaking. Yeah. And, and it was like that all over the movie. Yeah. So, um, uh, it, it, you know, everybody contributed, so it had a bit of a collage film mm -hmm. look by the, by the end. Yeah, there was, a, there was also, like, I think probably an unprecedented amount of um, fact and force in this, in the in sort of the pipeline process, mm -hmm. just because of what we were doing in with the sort of animation on twos, um, but still the desire to be able to move the camera in a really sort of expressive, of, of, you know, um, operated way in certain moments. Um, so we, we would often, um, once we would have sort of a, a blocking pass in camera, we'd go into anim and we would get like a rudimentary performance, uh, and then we'd go back into camera and we would actually operate camera based on that performance, go back into anim, anim finish the performance, and then go back to camera again. So it was a really, um, Again, it's like a, it's, it's like probably the most bespoke animated film of all time. <laughs> uh, let's do more questions while we can. All right, this guy all the way in. Yeah. Okay. Um, I thought it was such an amazing film thematically on top of everything else, just because there was different Spider-Man. They're all so much further along than Miles is, and it's just such a beautiful uh, thing where he feels he doesn't measure up, and it feels so authentic to that experience of growing up. My question is, how did you guys attack it in the beginning? How did you sort of like start the process of making this film in order to get to a point where the themes were so strong and it was so authentic to your experience? Well, the very, very beginning, um, um, the first page of the script of the treatment that Bill wrote had a mission statement about what we wanted to do and how we wanted to inspire people and how we wanted to let people know that they were powerful and that we were counting on them. And that was uh, something that uh, clicked for everybody as far as the idea of like anyone can be a hero and anyone should be a hero and we, sh we all should be looking out for each other. Was something that everybody uh, was like a rallying call and they printed it up in a big sign in the, in the hallway of the office um, and, and it was uh, the part of the guiding light from the very, very beginning, and so that was really um, baked in from the beginning. But other aspects of the theme are uh, things that you like. You try a bunch of different things, and we tried so many various versions of this thing, and, and certain things started to crystallize throughout the process of like, oh, this is this is how the dynamic between Miles and his dad and his uncle, and then another mentor of Peter and then the rest of the gang, and how does he synthesize all of those into one idea that still makes his own way uh, by taking influence from everybody else and finding his own path. That idea was um, was hard to, to crystallize immediately, but it, but as the movie came on, it just sort of knew what it wanted to be, and, was, and, it, and it showed us the way. It, it, because of its execution, it ended up being really nuanced. You know, because initially I think we were really leaning into more um, like resiliency only, and the idea of like you get knocked down, you get back up, and you keep going. Um, and then when we realized that the film, the characters, each character was so strong, and there was like a, this this community that we were introducing to Miles that he was trying to be a part of, it became um, a much more complex and, and multi-shaded thematic element. You know, it wasn't just we always get back up. Um, it was. It was. It was that um, we are not alone. We are. We all have these these 
similar obstacles that we have to overcome, and we find um, mentorship in many strange places. Um, and, um, and that's the stuff that I think later in, in the film really started to like elevate the whole movie. Well, we, we started by asking, you know, like forget that it's a Spider-Man movie, like what's this about, or what are we curious about? And before we even put pen to paper, we're thinking, what's the difference between a kid who succeeds and a kid who doesn't? And 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 that's what we were exploring the whole time. And what are we what are we supposed to do to help somebody become the person that they want to be? And and so the I think the movie's proposal is that it's this combination of your personal resiliency and having the, you know seeking and finding and having the people in your life who, who pick you up and who are willing to challenge you right like his, like like his parents challenge him to be his best self but they are also very loving and and supportive and. And, 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 and looking to, to highlight the things that he does well. And, and I think that's, you know, I think that's the movie really, ultimately, I learned a lot from watching it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I think in that, that, that statement that, that you wrote on the first treatment, it's not only um, an empowering statement, it's also a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it was. It was. Um, I want the people from Sony to know that I have no idea what time it is or when we're supposed to end. So is that supposed to be, oh, can I take one more question then? Because I was going to say, you're going to have to tell me because I can do this all afternoon because I love these guys and I love this film. Um, I can't think of a good nickname for you, but you're slightly standing up and you and you got a black shirt and you've got a, oh, okay, you got a balding head. And that, I didn't want to say that. Wow. You could have stopped the black yes, shirt. I'm sorry. I know I could. First off, gentlemen, thank you for making a film where you have mad fight sequences and all this stuff going on, and we can actually follow what's going yes. on. Yeah, that's another fact. <laughs> I have seen live action movies lately where that was not the case. <laughs> but that's my question about this choreography. When you've got you know, 900 characters all in a scene going different directions and el physical elements and all of that. These days, is that number crunching or is there actually some mad human being, okay, that goes there and that goes there and so forth? But the, yeah, there's like, a, a, there's like a team of mad human beings doing that stuff. It's, it's very, yeah, it, it, it takes a long time and a lot of iterations and it kind of bounces back and forth between storyboarding and camera, you know, layout, and then uh, animation, but each of those passes kind of moves the ball a little bit further, and, uh, you know, like in, the, in that crazy, uh, our whole insane third act when everything just goes nuts, um, we churned and churned away at board pass after board pass, but a lot of time what we were doing in boards was testing ideas and just trying to get some kind of flow of action that made sense you know, in general terms, and we had the beats, and we, you know, knew we, we wanted, uh, we had ideas about the staging that we just wanted to indicate, and then we'd go into camera and uh, animation, and it would just get pushed so much further with more nuance and more detail, and Bob, uh, Bob can speak a lot to that, because that was our, it feels like we just did it. We did just do it. We did really, like, that whole, especially that whole sort of climax, um, Rodney made a wonderful statement where he was like, how does it feel to be like Jackson Pollocking like a, a superhero movie, third act climax? And I was like, what about there? What about over there? Um, and it was very stressful. <laughs> but like, I think the thing that, as, as, as choreographed as it feels, um, we were searching the whole time to get there, and there was a lot of trial and error. And then, even after it was sort of in that, that state of, okay, all the performance is there, and everything's moving where you think it should move, um, it was really um, distracting because it, it did not look what it would look like when you, what you see here lit, because that was all based on, you know, um, these ideas of what was going to be sort of blotted out and what was going to drop out, and, and, and so our art production designer, Justin, and, and our art director, Dean, um, those guys, uh, you know, and, and everybody here who obviously could comment uh, in the dark room about what they're looking at really um, just helps sort of, you know, tweak and tune the film to a place where, in a, in a place where you're looking at some pretty far out action, but you can actually follow it. Um, it, was, it but to me, I think, like, I, you know, watching you guys, 
work some of that stuff out. There's, you're always talking about the story and the characters and what the action is meant to convey, and 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 what uh, how the physicality is expressing what's going on in, inside people's hearts. <laughs> and when you do that, you're on really, you know, you're on really solid ground. Um, because, and then and then part of why you follow it is because like everybody knows what it's about. <laughs> Right, you know, from like the, the folks who are doing the shops all the way um, through DI and the and the sound mix. You know, where those guys really help us direct the eye to the thing that matters and to strip out everything that doesn't. Like you'll notice, like when Miles and Peter say goodbye, Peter is hanging over like a like a, an energy source that in like three shots ago was so loud you couldn't hear and everybody was screaming, right? But it's silent because the movie is told from the point of view of those guys and their relationship and how they feel about each other. And it feels right, even though if you think about it, it looks crazy. Yeah. Well, um, animation follows trends, usually. And uh, with action-adventure animation, it started with the Fleischers and Superman. And uh, and then I'd say that uh, the, the Hanna trend. I'd say Hanna Barbera. <laughs> I'd say Hanna Barbera sort of changed the, the game with uh, Johnny Quest, and they mm -hmm. everything they did after that was kind of derivative. And then Johnny let's Quest. give a shout out to Bruce Tim with the Batman the Animated, which which really was a takeoff from the Fleischer Superman. But I think what we saw here today is another direction for American animation, for adventure animation. This is something brand new. I think it's working. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody going out there.